What can people start doing now that will help them a lot in about five years? Registered dental hygienist weighing in on this, if you have to brush only once a day, due to depression, exhaustion, laziness, whatever, please 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 brush at night. I see so many patients on a regular basis who only brush once a day in the morning, but what they don't realize is when we go to bed at night everything we ate, drank throughout the day as well as the plaque, bacteria in our mouths just sit completely undisturbed all night long whether this be five six seven or eight hours this contributes to a lower ph which leads to cavities and dry mouth some people experience during the night puts you at an even higher risk for a tooth decay your salivary glands slow their function while you sleep so not much is moving around at all like it would be while we are active during the day so for your sack and the sack of your dental health care professionals please brush at night twice a day obviously is preferable i tell my patients i will happy dance with them if they come back in and have been brushing to x slash dead i've only brushed at night not due to laziness but due to anxiety problems as a kid i used to puke every morning trying to make me put anything in my mouth would make me puke it was hell even though for the most part my anxiety doesn't hit like that anymore the habit stayed I guess morning brushing brings back bad memories so I just don't do it. I do try and chew gum though, so I hope that helps. I only have a couple of fillings at 30 so I think I'm doing okay. FFS, please do this. I'm sitting outside of a walk-in clinic now waiting to get antibiotics for an abscess tooth because the pain has become unbearable. My right eye keeps leaking from the pressure and I've taken so much pain medication that my stomach hurts. I can't stand this pain much longer and I've been sitting here for 2 a.m. a half hours. My own abscess was painless, and I have always practiced good dental hygiene. Sometimes, a tooth silently dies and it's unpreventable. I was tested for, among other things, rheumatoid arthritis and chronic fatigue syndrome before they finally figured out what was wrong with me. In the decades since, I have recommended that people who are sick and nobody can figure out why I see a dentist, if they haven't already, a root canal and 10 days of penicillin cured me dot 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 for about 25 years, and then it flared and had to be done over. Still have a front tooth, however so it was worth it. Basically it's an infection that just keeps spreading. In my case, it's because I have a rotten tooth that needs to come out, probably through surgery. And now I have a very large area above the front, right of my mouth that connects almost to my right eye, that would be the infected area. When I went to a sleepover as a kid, I didn't realize people brushed their teeth after eating breakfast. It was so weird to me. I always brushed right after getting up in the morning and then ate breakfast. Also, scraping your tongue helps with bad breath. Haha. <laughs> For me it's the exact opposite. I was so weirded out like two weeks ago when I realized you were supposed to brush before breakfast. Now I realize why people aren't as insecure about their breath as me. Although now it's fine. And yeah, tongue scrapping is really important and effective. Figuring out what you like. Jobs. Volunteering you enjoy, exercise you enjoy, healthy food you enjoy, meditation slash stretching slash spiritual practices you enjoy, people you're excited be around who don't judge you. There's lots of adults out there doing activities under the guise of happiness who've never devoted time to self-discovery. Being an adult for 10 years and other than healthy food you enjoy, that I still don't stick to 100% of the time. I haven't found any of the other things on this list despite a mostly concerted effort to search for them, especially first and last. Starting to believe enjoyment isn't something I'm wired for when it comes to the hard things in life, work, exercise, self-improvement through meditation slash yoga slash spirituality, socializing, hobbies. 
I mean other than typical kid stuff, board games as well as outdoor games like tag, pie plus seek, playing make-believe, not really, I'd say 90% of my free time as a kid was spent playing video games, I do still play video games and more or less enjoy them I guess, it's hard to tell whether I play because they're fun or because they allow me to distract myself from my hopeless and anxious thoughts. I was also forced to participate in various sports, soccer, baseball, hockey, football, by my parents and never enjoyed it mostly because participating in team sports was when I was bullied the most. I also took piano and guitar lessons, and did trombone in school, but never enjoyed it and it was honestly an extremely frustrating experience once I got to the point where I wasn't improving anymore, so I stopped. Remember with exercise, it's usually awful when you first start. You have to stick with it and keep it up to make it better. It will get easier and more enjoyable the more consistently you do it. I hated running when I first started. I've now done about 15 half marathons and one marathon and I love running. I also still have bad runs. I just make sure to try again and not give up. I'm jealous, but also congrats. I seem to be immune to the endorphin hit. Runner's high. I've been working out regularly for about 5 years now, and I still hate it. The results are worth it though. The gym isn't fun, and it takes a ton of time I'd rather use for other things, but I'm approaching 30 and in borderline the best shape of my life. Got real out of shape during the pandemic, because I never cracked the secret of forcing myself to work out at home. If I go to the gym. I only have to be disciplined enough to get there. Once I'm there there's nothing to do but work out. I'm also just more aware of my body now than I used to be. I know what's tight. How far I can push myself, can tell good pain from bad pain. Know how to handle small injuries, have better ergonomics etc. Now, rock climbing and long distance hiking are things I truly enjoy. But I don't get to do them anymore, because my partner isn't able to, and I hate doing them alone skeptical. Understand yourself, your body, your condition, and learn how to take care of yourself as much as you can. Example, learn how to cook a healthy yet delicious food. Learn how to cook in an unlikely condition, like, in rush, ingredients substitute. Learn food prep, learn managing groceries from purchasing storage to recycle learn how to cut your own hair learn laundry management learn how to take care of your house etc in five years you'll thank yourself for learning all of these learn how to cut your own hair agree with all except this i used to cut my own hair for five plus years you think you get good at it and maybe you can give yourself something that looks great for that one angle in the mirror but at best you'll only be giving yourself C haircuts, just get yourself to a barber, salon and look your best. Google is really good for this. Think of a relatively simple restaurant dish and Google a recipe. Put healthy in front of it and you'll get a different version. A lot of recipes are just different ways to cook the same thing. Come up with a few ways to cook staples like potatoes and rice and practice them so they are always really yummy. Likewise for something like carrots or onions and keep a good sauce on hand and learn some easy, tasty recipes for whatever kind of protein you like. If you have a few good ways to cook simple foods and you keep some long-lasting veg in the fridge, cupboards you can always come up with a quick meal. If you're in a pinch, well the potatoes are really good so you can deal with some tin peas, you know. I read an article about Drake, and how he stays fit. The article said Drake, one time did 100 burpees in 40 minutes. I fucking hate Drake. I hate his music. I hate his face. So out of spite, I decided to get my ass off the couch and beat that. I did it in 20 minutes half the time just to prove that Drake was a punk ass bitch. It was very exhausting, but I did it. I then realized that if I can get that good of a workout in 20 minutes, then why am I stressing about going jogging or going to the gym? 
So now I do burpees all the time, and I'm getting pretty fit. I can do 100 in less than 10 minutes. I know everyone hates burpees, but you know what I hate more? Drake. It may not work for everyone, but maybe give stick.com a shot. You set a goal and a bet and you can set it up so if you don't reach your goal it goes to a charity you absolutely hate. Nothing gets me doing push-ups like knowing if I don't the Trump 2024 campaign is going to get my 100 bucks. I know what you want to say, but I feel the need to throw in a little additional info. Don't go jogging if you a have problems with your knees or b are overweight. You will do yourself no favor. The problems shouldn't be ignored anyways and going for a jag while overweight will cause knee damage. And dear God, get some good shoes for the right thing. Shoes for running on concrete are very different to shoes you want to use on softer surfaces. There are also other sports to get started if you can't go jogging for one reason or another. Elliptical rowing Cycling. If you don't want to take a bike out on the road, you can set it up on a trainer in front of the TV, and watch spin videos. And if you don't want to work that hard, you can just queue up a movie and pedal. Intensity will make the gains come faster, but doing anything at all is better than nothing. Try lifting weights too. I'm not a physical therapist or medic in any way but I have a squat machine that tones my legs and my booty but is also a fantastic cardio workout. Because it has a seat and handlebars is might be a worthy investment since you have limited mobility in your ankle. I have the DB Method brand machine but I'm sure there's others out there. I swear by it. It's a genuinely good workout and is super easy to use. It's basically just squats but you have more support because you're seated. I also have a maxi climber, that might also be easy on your ankle. What would you suggest as a suitable alternative for someone overweight? I had a back injury about 15 years ago that means I have a plasticized muscle at the bottom of my back. So I can't lift my left leg as high as my right, doesn't affect a casual stroll. But it means I can't cycle anymore, which used to be my main cardio. Ditto rowing machines. I'm now at a point in my life looking back at 15 years of little exercise and hitting regrets hard, but struggling to think of suitable cardio that is possible without that limitation being a barrier. Don't be scared of being a gym rat either though. A little muscle looks good on just about everyone, and I've found it can also really help with some little stuff like hand-eye coordination. People have this weird unfounded fear about getting too bulky. Steroids and Hollywood have given people very unrealistic expectations about how quick and easy it is to put on muscle. No one ever, in the entire history of the world, has ever gotten too bulky on accident. You're just looking to tone up, that means hitting the gym 3-5 times per week for several months 2 years and getting your body fat levels down to moderate to low. Toning up requires a significant amount of muscle mass. Add it 3-5 times per week, not day. Too many tic tac or fitness people are on roids and don't let their viewers know. Natty limit is much smaller than most people realize but over time you know how to spot the signs of it. Getting that big takes effort. Those like that absolutely did it on purpose. Girls, don't be scared to lift weights and work out chest and back. Working chest will push boobs up and forward rather than making them disappear. It is possible to get pretty big naturally, depending on your definition of big, but that takes a lot of time and dedication that most people just don't have. The biggest problem with TikTok slash YouTube slash Instagram creators is when they are on roids but act like they got it naturally, and then use their physique to sell you some dollar $100 plus program claiming that it'll get you these results fast. Often pull-ups are hard because they use some dot muscles you may not often use. Don't worry though they can be developed quite simply. Get something to stand on so you can stand in pulled-up position. Lift your feet up so you are hanging in pulled-up position. 
pulled at a while then slowly let herself down to having straight arms, still dangling, put your feet on the ground, then climb back on your box ready to do it again, do this five times in a row, do this most days unless something hurts, increase the amount of time you are at position 2 for a little bit each day, soon you will have developed the right muscles for pull ups, although pull ups will still be super difficult, because they are not easy, which is why they are good. Light exercise, came here to say this specifically, I think a lot of people are turned off by strenuous exercise because it can be uncomfortable in the moment so starting and sticking with it is hard. We undersell light, low impact exercise, though, I think a lot of people think of exercise overall as a remedial effort, that is, a weight loss tool instead of a proactive maintenance effort. But light exercise is so important and it's enjoyable. Walking is great exercise, especially if you switch between strolling and power walking. Way easier on the joints than running. No pain the next day. Plus if you do it outdoors it's free. It's a good source of vitamin D. It's an easy social outing with a friend. And it's a great way to familiarize yourself with your neighborhood and watch the little things change around you. Cycling is great for this too. Plus since cycling can get you further distances than walking, it makes it easier for you to combine an errand with your exercise. If you have some savings already, putting an emergency fund in a no-fault CD will give you better returns than a savings account. Savings account barely gives anything back. But at least it's better than nothing. A no-fault CD is a good place to store money that you will need in the future and don't want to gamble. For example, if you lose your job then you know you'll have at least the amount you put in there. Whereas stocks, ETFs etc is not as stable. Look at ETFs in general last year March to August. It was a shit show for the most part but they did rebound. If you would have needed that money in March you'd be taking it out on a loss. Otherwise, if it's money that you're putting away for retirement or very long term then 401k, Roth IRA, or putting it into a good Vanguard ETF are good options as well. Everyone is in a different situation. But generally speaking, start with saving money in an emergency fund. Beyond that begin paying off debts especially any high interest debts or loans. Part of investing is understanding what is your personal risk tolerance, are you okay with losing it all for a chance at making big gains? If so, consider crypto, individual stocks, options, lottery tickets. Or are you more conservative and comfortable with steady, less risky, but probably smaller gains, then look at broad market funds. ETFs, sector Fs, bonds, tips, savings accounts. Of course you can do any combination of investing you want, nobody can predict the future. Also, consider investing in yourself as an investment to improve yourself, your future, or even someone else, go back to school, learn a new craft, get medical attention, get a haircut, get a gym membership, buy organic, healthy food. Treat yourself to a nice vacation, donate it to charity. Investing is making your money grow and you're richer. How you define being rich is dependent on the person and isn't always monetary. If you're not already saving, then yeah, first get in the habit of setting at least some money aside each month. Once you have that in place, then start investing so your money can make money. That's the real way that rich people get richer. Just to give an example, if you can earn 8% annually, which is below historical mean, but pretty good return right now, then if you keep setting aside the same amount each month, in 10 years your savings will produce more in a year than what you are saving. A more conservative 4% will exceed savings rate in just under 20 years, meaning, if you put aside $10 per month, within a decade or two your savings should be earning more than $10 per month. The worst thing when stopped smoking is, that your nose will adjust to it pretty much two to three days in. Everything was smelling horribly. I had to wash everything I could, 
Even though I never smoked inside my apartment, but my jacket smelled like an old dash ray and I became hypersensitive to that smell. It really opens your eyes how bad you smelled all that time while non-smokers were just polite enough to not point it out constantly.